to the Kent Lab Podcast. You are writing a, have written a book. What, can you talk about what it's about? Can we talk about when it's yeah. going to come out? It's going to come out next Well, you've September. written a lot of books, let's just be clear. Well, but this um, is the most recent one that I'm aware of. And this is the one I feel the most strongly about. Oh, wow. Um, as I said, I'm 71 years old. I am 71 years tired and fed up with seeing magnificent young men in your generation neutralized by shame. Uh, and men who were created by God for magnificence, for nobility, for impact. They were created by God to change the course of history. But they have been so beaten up inside by shame and regret. They've been hollowed out by one thing. And this one thing, when I'm I interacting with guys in your generation, I don't wonder if they're exposed to porn. I know they're exposed to porn. Mm -hmm. It's the wallpaper of our culture. So this book is called The Death of Porn. And it's not about just about guys no longer looking at porn. It's about guys coming together and rising up to starve the beast, to push back against the whole industry that creates it. This industry that has a financial interest in oppressing and abusing women, girls, and men. Mm -hmm. This engine of oppression, we can change that. Um, two weeks before he died, in 1791, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, wrote a letter to a young man in the British Parliament, William Wilberforce. And, and wrote a letter to this young man saying, you must devote your life to the abolition of the slave trade in the British Empire. Mm -hmm. This was in London. And uh, it was the last letter he wrote. He wrote the letter. Two weeks later, he died. This book is a series of six letters to young men calling them to devote their lives to diminishing, injuring, marginalizing, stigmatizing the whole porn industry. It can be done. If mm. the slave trade could be ended, porn can be pushed back against. Mm -hmm. That's what the book is about. The Death of Porn? The Death of Porn. When does it come out? Next September, 2021. Oh, wow. Wow. Is that common to have it be written so far in advance? Well, it is. I mean, there are, there are a lot of dominoes that have to fall over sure. between a book being written and a book being published. Yeah. And so right now, all that work is being done behind the scenes. Sure. Yeah. But you've written it. I've written your, it. Your part is, the lion's share for you is done. Yes. And I didn't realize it was going to be in the form of six letters. Yes. And these are letters sort of written from you to young men? Yes. And each one begins, dear son. Okay. Oh, I love that. And at the end, because you matter, Ray. Oh, wow. Oh, man. I can't wait for this to come out. Um, you've never written a book quite in that format before. No. Yeah. Was it something about your stage of life and the subject matter that this sort of method of for writing this book made the most sense? Yeah. Um, you know, I, life is a vapor. Uh, I used to know that intellectually. Now it's vividly real to me existentially. I am astonished that I am now in my 70s. And as I said earlier, it's just great. It's so freeing because now the whole meaning of my life is to turn around and lift up the guys who are coming behind me, the next generation. Just invest in them as much as I possibly can. Because here's what almost no young men believe. They, every single one of them, was created by God for a glorious purpose. You guys are not on the planet to get by some. You are here to bring the kingdom of God into a world of chaos and death, a world vandalized by human folly. You are here to create beauty. You, you are here in, in that kind of world. 
You're here to reoxygenate exhausted, other exhausted young men who are no longer able to believe in their own greatness. Now, you, uh, th- my privilege is to devote my life to doing all I can to help you guys rise up as a vast, mighty army of wounded healers who know why they're on the planet. Mm-hmm. And when you believe that about a young man's purpose during their time on earth, and you survey the landscape culturally and, and, and so forth, you perceive that the biggest hindrance to that, or one of the biggest hindrances to that, or one of the ways in which shame can creep into young man's life and derail him or distract him from this mission is porn? I wish I had enough uh, research and uh, uh, scholarship and understanding to to give a, a complete answer to that question. It's a great question. It's a powerful question. I do know porn must be one of the primary hindrances to the greatness of men and the liberation and redignifying women. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm so struck, Kent. I don't hear, I don't hear us talking about porn. Uh, one of the reasons might be that we've just accepted it. It's so pervasive in our, our culture. When I'm clicking through the internet, little enticements pop up. I'm not looking at porn, Kent. Mm -hmm. Porn is looking for me. Mm -hmm. It's coming and tracking me down. And so I'm, I I have to keep saying no every day. Mm -hmm. And by the way, when you're 71 years old, you're going to find that the battles that you're facing in your life right now are the same battles you're going to be facing all the way to the end. I mean, we are Mm -hmm. so in this together. Mm -hmm. It's not as though you're, this, this glorious, your sexuality, every man's sexuality, is not basically a problem to cope with. Mm-hmm. It is a privilege. It is a glory. It is an investment that God made. God touched a man's body with this energy, this magic, this glory that we call sexuality for a purpose that that only God can fulfill. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for that to be, as you say, derailed or or, uh, degraded, uh, we need to have a proper indignation Mm -hmm. that we're being treated like this, that we're being solicited like this every day, and then lock arms together as partners as allies in the fight, uh, and, and not only recommit to our own integrity, our own dignity, but to create spaces wherever we go, small groups of men where guys can get their lives back and then devote their lives to making the future better than the present. Is yes. Right yeah. Wow. I mean, it has to be one of the most prevalent, most dangerous things that goes on in secret, behind closed doors, in men, in, I, I would say all over the world, although I'm, you know, I, I don't know, but certainly it seems like in America with the access that we have on social media and phones and the internet and everything like that, I mean, I don't know what else really would rival it. I mean, I think kind of greed is in there, of course. That's always there. But, man, it, it has to be. You know, when you put it like that, it has to be one of the biggest things that would drive men to shame and distraction and derailment yes. today. And self-concealment. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Isolation. So this is a big deal. It's a big deal. And it's getting worse. Um, I got some data from uh, uh, a man at the publishing company that's doing this book. And it tracked... Uh, visits to porn websites with the rise of COVID-19 in 2020. Oh, no. And the the two lines matched each other in this. Really? Yeah, this, the, both skyrocketed in the course of 2020. So we are being body slammed as a culture at the level of our, our physical health and 
at the level of our deeply internal, personal health, si both simultaneously. At both levels, um, we are uh, injured, threatened by COVID-19, and going to porn for comfort and consolation in our isolation. It is very serious. Where is that going to take us? So I hope this book will give guys uh, courage to gather together and talk with each other about what's really going on and mm -hmm. what they're really facing and pray for one another, support one another, comfort, encourage, and strengthen one another, and turn around and do, do something that would really help the future. We don't want to pass this on to our children. Yeah. Especially you, our granddaughter. Or my granddaughter's your daughter. Yes. Do you think it's so prevalent because we're not being pushed back against more because it's so common, it's so prevalent, and it's hard for someone to fight against someone that they're dealing with themselves? Yeah. Or because you sort of have this, the older generation may be, although this, this theory wouldn't check out because even like the older generation like you, I mean, you have a phone and you have the computer and everything. I was going to say, is it maybe the older generation that's not aware of how prevalent this problem is? And then the younger generation just, just, they're not all watching porn, but they sort of have this assumption that it's always been this way. Yeah. When it's like, no, at some point it was not this bad. It's real bad right now. And no one's really talking about it. Yeah, I think all of the above. But I think widely, it is so prevalent, so well-established, so successful as, as a, a business, so uh, ever-present where we turn, and no one, it seems, I shouldn't say, not enough voices are saying, time out here. Wait, this is insane. Porn is a justice issue. It's not just about personal purity. Uh, I, I don't even use the word purity in the book because that has some connotations I don't want to get involved in. It's about integrity, personal integrity and social justice. That's what porn is about. If we, were, if we treated racism with the same uh, acceptance and blasé attitude that we have toward porn, well, it's just unimaginable mm. that we would do so. That we, there is no way we're going to make peace with and settle for racism in our lives, in our homes, in our churches, in our community. Why do we do that very thing in relation to this equally evil reality of the oppression of women and girls through pornography? Yeah. Wow. I love that you put it in those camps, personal integrity and social justice. That's exactly where it belongs. And I like that you left purity out of the book too. Maybe that, maybe that is less helpful. Um, I wanted to ask you anything else on the book or porn? <laughs> well, obviously, when you brought up the topic, you pushed my button. I could talk for a long time, but yeah. that's good. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're, we're good. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Yeah.